Hi friends and welcome. On today's show, we're going back over to Bow Camp for my hunt. Now I should fill you in, we used to go over to Bow Camp with our good friend and pro staffer, Mr. Ryan Hopkins, and hunt just about every year. He hosted us on a tremendous hunt. It was fun, it was exciting, everything deer hunting should be and more. And when he called me this spring and said, hey, why don't we schedule another bow camp like we used to do? You know, it's been five years. Well, quite frankly, I was amazed it had been that long. You know, life does have a funny way of getting on its own business while we're making other plans. But five years? Well, I knew for a fact it wasn't going to be five more before we got over there to see the rut. We planned it for that time. And you saw, if you're a regular viewer, Ryan's hunt from this year. Well, now you're going to see what I saw. There was a little snow on the ground, it got really cold, and the rut really fired up. Friends, I'm your host, Kyle Randall. This is my Wilderness Journal, and we're headed back to bow camp for my hunt right now. <laughs> That afternoon it was clear and cold. There was a north wind coming that had a razor edge on it. It was just the kind of day that quite frankly you have to tell yourself, no really, we're having fun now. And the truth is, as the sun slowly sank, I kept putting on more and more clothes. And friends, it still wasn't enough. I was warmed a little by the sight of a doe and a button buck working their way down the ridge headed out toward the food plot. That is until they both pulled up short and started staring down by the cedar run. And then they turned and ran back down into the trees. I don't know what it was that was bothering those deer, but they were definitely leaving. I sat there looking, wondering, until I noticed another doe working her way across the food plot, coming at me at an angle. I didn't see how this deer could have spooked him, but for whatever reason, this gal didn't have any problem walking right out in front of me. She fed for a while and then just wandered off and that's all we saw until just at sunset when the crunch of footfalls grabbed my attention. I looked, there was a pretty nice buck coming up through the trees, the setting sun lighting up his eyes. He closed the distance to about 40 yards and then stopped and started working in a scrape. This looked like a tight, heavy three-year-old eight point, a pretty nice buck. Unfortunately, he wasn't headed in our direction. He worked his way out into the food plot and then headed off more or less the way the doe had gone. I'm not real sure I would have taken a run at that buck, but I am sure I never got the chance to decide. After he left, I just sat there looking around, trying to keep my mind busy, trying to think of anything other than how cold I was. It was getting late, the sun was setting, and then I heard it again. More crunching. What looked like the exact same eight point was headed back across the field, only this time he was angling in toward me. This was a pretty nice deer, like I said, and he was getting close enough I was going to have to decide, was this the buck I was going to take a shot at, or was I going to wait? And then a doe popped out on the far side of the field. And he made the decision for me again. A hard right turn, off across the field. I never even reached for my bow. I've said it many times, the rut giveth and the rut taketh away. These two just eased out on across into the trees. They were making enough racket pushing and chasing that I decided to grunt a little bit just in case.
but it didn't seem to have any effect either. And then, just as it got dark, I saw a group of does working their way along the edge of the swamp coming toward the field. They didn't appear to be in any real hurry. That is, until another doe came working up alongside of them. This doe, with her tail stuck right straight out, fired them up. They started running in toward the field, and then... And then the reason for all the commotion came trotting in behind them. What appeared to be a two-year-old eight-point was coming right straight across the field. Like a cutting horse, he was rounding up all the does and fawns and pushing them all into one corner. And then he pushed the whole bunch of them right back out of the field. And other than a hard, cold, red sunset, that's all I saw that night. That first evening, as the sun went down, I pulled up literally everything I had in my backpack to put on, and I was still freezing to death. I had seen a nice three-year-old buck and a two-year-old, but to tell the truth, I expected to see even more chasing, more fighting. I knew the rut was upon us any day, and I figured if I got a good doe or two in there, then I'd see some of the big boys. And until then, I consoled myself with the reality that at least it was cool enough to keep the deer up and moving, if I didn't freeze to death waiting. I spent the entire next day without seeing much of anything, so... Yeah, I decided to move. And the next morning, I did get a chance to grunt at one cruising buck just after daylight. But that's all I really saw that morning, so by the following afternoon, yeah, I was beginning to wonder. They do. <laughs> it warmed right up, though. As I say, I'm glad you brought that uh, warm weather from Canada with you. This morning, not so much. <laughs> It's like four degrees this morning. Terrible. But it's warm right up now. It's like 28. It's balmy. Hey, balmy. Well, I put some SPF on. Perfect. <laughs> well, here we are again. Hopefully, I can do half as good as you did. It's going to be tough to duplicate. Right there, right there. Nice shot, brother. Right on the money. Good luck, boss. Thanks. That's it good was see. good to good be day. there, and it was good to be bow hunting again. But it wasn't real good, not until just about an hour before dark when I noticed a doe working her way up out of the swamp. And following her was a little mutton buck. And following him was a great big buck. A gorgeous, wide, heavy eight point. I tried to stop him as he was angling in, hoping for a shot. And then I tried to stop him again. But it was like he couldn't even hear me. And then when he finally did stop, I didn't have any shot at all. And when the doe he was following turned and went up the field, yeah, he turned and went right with her. And then I saw another buck coming. A younger buck looked like a six or a seven point. He was cutting that big buck a pretty wide berth, but he was definitely interested in the same doe. It never fails to amaze me, friends, how these bucks know exactly where that one doe is but they were definitely all following her. And I say all because just after she ran across the field, I heard a noise and looked down and there was another buck coming right underneath us.
he stopped exactly where we'd place some scent to get a buck to stop so I could get a shot. Unfortunately, he wasn't quite old enough. Still, it was nice to see a plan work. Too far away or what? Too young. Right front end. See it? Next year's deer. On the far side of the field, our girl had a couple of young bucks in front of her. And then a big old buck came stalking in out of the trees behind her. And this three or four year old 200 pound plus critter wasn't all that impressed with the young boys chasing after that girl. I kept watching, and to be honest with you, I kept thinking, it's fixing to get a little wild and western any minute now. And when that doe popped back over to our side of the field and one of the smaller bucks started circling in behind her and then pulled up short, I looked. And here came that big boy. He was working his way right straight in toward the doe. I thought, you know, if she stays put and he keeps coming. He'd closed the distance to about 50 yards when she turned and started back out into the field. He, of course, started angling out that way too, so I grunted at him once and, and he turned and was coming. But only for a second. The two smaller bucks that were courting that doe started fighting. And that was obviously more than he could take. He went charging out there to put them all in their place. I told you it was going to get western. I just didn't know it was going to get this wild this fast. He stalked out there and pushed him farther and farther off. That is until the doe ran off in the other direction and then he did a pretty quick about face and came back up the field. The only thing he didn't do was come anywhere near me. We were seeing tremendous action but I still hadn't got a shot yet. I grunted at that big boy as he worked his way down the far end of the field, but it didn't seem to matter. And then, and then I saw the wide eight that had been there earlier, and he was following him back down the field, heading off toward that doe. Two shooters in less than 20 minutes, and still no shot. That, my friends, is the difference that a doe can make. One hot doe comes in, and the boys come out of the woodwork. They start fighting and posturing. You thought it was so exciting. I didn't get a shot, at least not yet, but it was really awesome to be there and to see that much rut activity. The sun was going down. I knew this day would soon be over, but I also knew as long as one or two of those does were in the area, I might yet get a chance. And speaking of chances, the two young bucks that had been fighting out in the field were now fighting down through the trees and they were giving each other a chance to quit or give up or something, I guess, but it didn't look like either one of them was ready to throw in the towel. Them two are fighting pretty good. I stood there marveling at the strength and the stamina these bucks have. They are literally throwing around 150 pound opponents with their head. And I was amazed right up until I heard a grunt right behind me. Here was a dandy buck, at least a three-year-old. His antlers had been busted up from fights of his own, but this was definitely a big boy. I grabbed my bow and ripped it back. Bah. And he turned and headed off toward the other two bucks. And that's all it took to take the fight out of them. In fact, one of them turned and started walking right back up to us. The big boy cut out into the field and the smaller buck walked right up in front of us, stopped at our scent station again and then passed through. And then even the older buck sort of turned off. If I look back over my shoulder, and there was that great big eight. In all the excitement, he'd managed to get right up underneath us. Now it was on me. Could I get turned in my stand and get my bow drawn without getting caught? Yeah. 
Ba. Watch him, watch him. I was right at the end of my rope. There you go. Dude, we nailed that one. Good job, boss. Big old heavy. Wide looked like an eight. I didn't even. I think he is a big eight. It was. Rut in here is just insane. It's crazy right now. We sat here for what, an hour and a half, and then deer, 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 and deer, and deer, and deer fight, is, fight, deer. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I sat here out here yesterday, not quarter of a mile from here, saw like three or four deer. You just never know. Never know. You get a hot doe or two in, and it, the whole thing comes unstuck. That was awesome. Thank you, man. Oh, great job, buddy. That was awesome. My pleasure. I was literally at the end of my rope. I couldn't turn no more. I was shoot then or forget it. Looks like a pretty good shot. A little bit back, but angling forward, that should be the ticket. Hey, glad to have you back in bow camp. Bow camp? I, I tell you, I don't even think I had gray hair then. <laughs> Maybe a little. Maybe a little. But it is nice. It's great to be back, you know. You and I have been hunting together and working together for 18 You're, years. As I said, do you really want me to say I that mean, number? you were like a teenager. <laughs> I, mean, I know you weren't shaving yet. Well, friends, as you saw, we had a show last night. <laughs> we finally got a great big old four or five-year-old buck in there. I turned as far as my rope would let me turn and I shot. We looked at it and it's right on the line. It's sort of back, not back into the paunch, but back last couple ribs. And I have to tell you, I've been doing this for a long time. I have told every one of you a hundred times, when in doubt, just back out. I looked at the shot. Ryan looked at the shot. He has recovered, I can't tell, countless deer. We agreed, walk away. It's hard, those sleepless nights, if you've ever suffered one, you know what I'm talking about. This is a thousand acres. Big old swamps, meandered creek bottoms, there's millions of places a deer can run and hide. And if you bump a deer that's not hit real well, chances are you're going home after a great hunt with empty pockets. We decided to do that. We're back here, it's, well, it's a little after nine in the morning. Hopefully we're gonna walk up and find this deer laying 100 yards away where it dropped. But if it didn't, this is the best way to ensure a happy ending. We're gonna take up the trail. We got my son-in-law Rob here. Ryan, we're gonna go find us a deer. Mark, right there. There's, we had the trail started. We'll, uh, I think your batteries are about shot. I'll get you some new ones. You can see just a little bit in the snow right there. He definitely went through here. Well, we got some, some coming. Right here, tile over the log. Okay. Rob, mark this spot for me, right here. Mark this one right here, Rob, please. Yep. Stop. Over here, Kyle, there he is. Yeah, yeah. buddy. Woo. Yeah, thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo. Look at that, mister. I'm pretty sure he's all done. Yep, all done. You know, he, he dropped right here, so right that there. shot wasn't that. Look. Pick that bad boy up. Look at that. Mr. Nice. Hopkins. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Bow camp, right? Bow camp. We used to do this all the time, friends. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, we got away from it. Got busy. Well, life gets like that. But yes, it does. Boy, am I glad. He called me up, folks. He said, hey, you know, it's been five years since we did bow camp. I said, impossible. He said, oh, <laughs> very possible. Yes. We finally got a chance to do it again, and we come out. Ryan shot a gorgeous buck. Did a little better job shooting than I did, because his went yeah, 30 inches right to the ground. All right, right. But we're thankful to see that our shot was good. It may, he went 140. 50. 160 50. yards, dropped right here. But friends, the message is the same. Could we have recovered him last night? Probably. Probably. But, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if you want your deer, and there's any doubt at all, we checked. We're up two ribs, just like we thought, like yep. the video showed. Yep. And believe me, without that video, you don't know. You know no. what you think, when leave them. When the adrenaline's pumping, it's always nice to have video to reassure what yeah. we saw. In a month and a week, I'm gonna be 60 years old. I have done this so many <laughs> times you can't imagine. And it's still hard. It's still a sleepless night, but if you wanna find your buck, I don't care if you, where you're at. 
back away. If you don't see that great sign, deer in 100 right. yards, quietly leave. We just, we just chucked out. We, we did. And friends, I mean it. You'll be so happy you did. So you lose sleep one night. I never sleep the night before opening day anyways. So I'm <laughs> I'll sleep in February. Right. But uh, man, what a buck. Great. Big old four. I call him four years old. He's I gonna, think he's four all day. My friends, I can't tell you how good it felt when Ryan said, hey, there he is right there. <laughs> Those are exactly the words you want to hear at the end of any bow hunt. Certainly one where you've had to wait overnight worrying about it. I truly want to thank Ryan and everybody over at Hopkins, certainly Rob for going out and helping us recover that animal. Friends, we back trailed it, 171 yards that buck went and he dropped right in his tracks. We could have certainly picked him up the night before, but I am absolutely certain we did the right thing and I want you to learn from my sleepless night. When you have any doubt at all, leave that deer, go back in the morning and recover him. You'll be happy. You'll hear those words, hey, there he is, instead of, I know we can't find him. That's the worst thing to hear at the end of any bow hunt. Hey, I hope we see you out there. I hope you're recovering and dragging in a big old buck of your own, and I hope you have some good friends and family to share it with like we did. And you have to know if we do bump into you out there, well, we're going to stop and share a cup and a fire, maybe a deer story or two. And if we don't see you out there, friends, well, then I'll wait for you right back here so we can share another adventure from my Wilderness Journal.